Hi guys, it's Anissa. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am doing the video that I have been waiting all year to do for you guys. Through the year of 2021, I have been compiling a list of my favorite makeup products that I just cannot live without. I have so many that I'm actually breaking this up into two parts, so today's video is just going to be high-end makeup, and then the next video going up after this will be my drugstore favorites. A lot of these products, surprisingly, are actually newer products that I've tried this year. I do have some products that stayed on my staples list from last year. If you're interested to see what products I just cannot live without, these are the products that I will run to the store and repurchase as soon as I run out of them because I just can't imagine a life without them. If you're interested, make sure to keep on watching, but before we go any further, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe subscribe. I post on this channel every four days so you never have to miss me for too long. I do have a video from last year that I will link right up here for you guys and also start a playlist that will also be down in the description box. I have a lot of makeup to talk about so I need to shut up. So we're gonna go ahead and get into it. I'm going to be talking about these products in the order that I do my makeup in. So first thing is brows. First, I wanna talk about the Sephora Retractable Brow Pencil and I have the color Ebony. This is actually a newer product that I have been loving. It is dual-ended so you get your product on one end, spoolie on the other. That's how all of these are, just a heads up. I would say out of all of the brow products that I'm going to talk about today, this one stands out to me so much because it has the creamiest formula. It is very easy to use and it swatches like a dream. It's very pigmented and it's very easy to blend out. The applicator is the perfect size if you're somebody like me who has thinner and more sparse brows to really get in there and be precise. And this also is waterproof for my brow pencil. I like something that has a smaller pencil. I like something that is pigmented and also easy to blend out. This is actually the most affordable. I love, love, love a lot of the stuff that I have tried from the Sephora collection. I feel like it's a very slept on brand, especially since it's literally Sephora's collection. So if you're wanting to kind of get into more high-end makeup, but you don't want to spend a whole lot of money, I feel like Sephora collection is a really good place to start. Charlotte Tilbury Brow Cheat Micro Brow Pencil, and I have this one in the color Black Brown. This one has the most unique shape. It is more of a triangular shape, but it's very small, so it's not hard to use at all. Out of all the options that I have for today, I feel like this is the most pigmented by far. The packaging is 10 out of 10. I feel like this could work for somebody with thicker brows or thinner brows because it does have that triangular shape, so you don't have to press it down directly. You can either use the two sides of the triangle where they meet, or you can use just the pointy end, which is what I use. This is an oldie but a goodie. I actually lost the top, but this is the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil, and I am in the shade number five. This, to me, is a mixture of the Sephora and the Charlotte Tilbury, and I say that because the pigmentation and the blendability are about equal versus with the Charlotte Tilbury, it's a little bit more pigmented than it is blendable, and this one is a little bit more blendable than it is pigmented, if that makes sense. So this is a really good in-between. It is way better, in my opinion, than the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Pencil, which I just don't think compares to any of these. I am so excited that the universe allowed me to meet this product. Tata Beauty Micro Shade Brow Pencil, and I have this in the color 7 Black Brown. The reason I love this so much is because it is the tiniest brow pencil you will ever use compared to like a standard size that I would use that is still considered pretty small. Look at how much thinner that is. The one thing with this is it's kind of trial and error because since it's so small, it is easy to break if you use too much pressure, but you really don't have to use a lot of pressure because it's pretty pigmented. If you have more of a heavy hand, just be careful with this product. You really don't need to be super heavy handed though because it does have a good amount of pigmentation. It is blendable as well. If you're somebody with like super, super thin brows, you will love this. And I also wanted to mention too that I have been trying a lot of new makeup at the end of the year that I like, but I don't like enough to say that it's like my best of beauty because I just haven't tried it for long enough. Next, we're gonna get into pot concealers. I do not have any favorite pomades from the high inside of makeup because I feel like brow pomades are something that can be very easily and well done in the drugstore. And all of my favorite brow pomades are drugstore. So you guys will see those in the next video. I do have a couple of pot concealers that I wanna talk about. Pot concealers I use to carve out the bottom of my brows only. I use my foundation to carve out the top. For a pot concealer, I do actually prefer something that is a little bit more thick in consistency because I have found that things that are more thick in consistency are easier to use when you are working with brow hair. It helps lay the brow hair down and also completely conceal it. And I want to say too, just because it's thick does not mean it is thick feeling. I don't get the same results with a liquid because it's just not thick enough and pasty enough to really hold that hair down and conceal it down. I believe that this was in my Best of Beauty last year. This is the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer and this is in the color Medium Deep 2 Caramel. It's a thicker consistency, but it is almost like a moussey texture and the color is perfect. I like 
the color to be a little bit lighter than I am just to kind of give the brow a little bit of a natural highlight. This is a product that I have quickly learned that I cannot live without. This is the Too Faced Peach Concealer Instant Coverage Concealer and it's in the color Nutmeg. This is what the color looks like. So it's a little bit darker than the last one is but it still does give a nice highlight and it comes in a really nice glass compact. I feel like this is actually a little bit more heavy duty than this is. Say I just want to clean my brows up and really not do a whole lot of eyeshadow but I just want them to be clean. I don't want them to be super Super cut. I will use this versus this. This is what I would use for a look like today, but I prefer the NARS consistency a little bit more. Next, I have the MAC Studio Finish Concealer, and this is in the color NC45. You do not get as much product as you do with these other two pots, but I do actually like this. I feel like this is the most blendable. This is very creamy, and it does have good coverage. I feel like it is the perfect consistency for underneath the brow. I feel like pot concealers like this are a little bit too heavy to use under the eye because they're so thick. Next is eyeshadow primer, and I have three that I want to talk about. These first two are oldies but goodies. T. Louise bases, and I have the colors zero and six. Number six is exactly my shade, so I use this sometimes if I don't want any eyeshadow on, and I just want to have a clean canvas and like a nice, fresh, no makeup makeup type of look. I will put this on by itself, but if I'm doing colored eyeshadow or even a nude, smoky look like I am today, I will mix in a little bit of zero because I have found that your shadows will pop a little bit more when they have something that is a little bit lighter to stick on to. Very creamy, very easy to blend out, and highly, highly, highly pigmented. A little goes a long way. I like these because they're correcting, and they also do leave a little bit of a sticky base. It's not super, super tacky to the point where you're sitting there blending your shadow out all day, but it does help the shadow stick. That way it has that longevity to it. Next, I have this MAC Paint Pot, and this is in the color Soft Ochre. I love this on the eyes because it does a little bit of lightening, and it does a very good job at leaving a smooth base for the shadow to go on, and again, kind of like the P. Louise base has a little bit of tack to it. I am going to mention a dupe of this in my drugstore video. I do hold on to this one because I found that this one is a little bit easier to blend out. I have a newer favorite that I'm excited to share with you guys because I really haven't gotten the chance to talk about it on this channel. This is the Rare Beauty Always an Optimist eyeshadow primer. It's like the perfect color for me to where it does correct and it hides my imperfections on my eyes. It does such a good job at smoothing. This really is not going to leave a whole bunch of tack. I love the formula on this. It's not too thick. It's not too thin. They have grown to be one of my favorite high-end brands because most of the stuff that I've tried from them is good. So in my opinion, I feel like they are very even across the board. They don't have like one great product and then everything else is not so good. Next is eyeshadow. First, start off with these two. These are both from Violet Voss. This is the I Love You Cherry Much palette and this is what it looks like very nice like Valentine's Day type of vibes pinks and a couple of browns all of you forever I should have palette mention this brand as a whole because everything that I have tried from Violet Voss as far as eyeshadow goes is so amazing it's so creamy so pigmented it's easy to build so if you want to do like a mixture of colors one color isn't going to mask the other it's very easy to for the other colors to be prevalent because they're pigmented the shimmer formula is just as good as the matte formula I found with a lot of brands that have a really good shimmer formula and then like an okay matte formula or a really good matte formula and then an okay shimmer formula and I do not hear anybody talk about this brand. So if you are wanting to try more high-end eyeshadow palettes, try these. Their color stories are very unique. Packaging is very unique. There is something for everybody. Next, I want to go ahead and talk about Natasha Denona, but I'm only going to specifically talk about these because I have tried other things from Natasha Denona, and this is what I like the best out of what I've tried. Natasha Denona Prawns palette, and this is what it looks like on the inside. So I feel like this is very good for the everyday person because it has really nice shades that can just be used to do any type of neutral, more warm look. I have tried the Metropolis palette, which I honestly do not think is worth the $130 because so many of the colors are so repetitive. I feel like you definitely get a better value with this $60 palette. If you don't want to really spend $70 on a big eyeshadow palette, they do have minis, and these two I'm going to specifically talk about. The one on the top is the mini nude palette, and then the one on the bottom is the mini sunset palette. The formulas are very nice. They're very smooth, very pigmented. Natasha Denona actually has one of my favorite glittery formulas because it's not super chunky feeling. It's very, very smooth. These are both $25 a piece, so if you just want something that is kind of more price friendly, these are 
are going to be it for you. You do only get five shadows. This is probably my most used palette of the year. This is the Huda Beauty Naughty Nudes eyeshadow palette. I actually did a review dedicated to this palette where I think I did three different eyeshadow looks. If you are wanting something that is going to be neutral but also pulls a little bit more purpley, pinky type of colors, this is so perfect for you. You do have some very nice matte transition shades, but you also have some very nice buttery. When I say buttery, I mean buttery shimmer shades. They're not gonna be really glitter based, but they are more shimmery. I mean, you can see in the pan where I have swirled my finger in them because they are just that creamy. These are probably the most pigmented shadows I've tried, but they are also super, super blendable. I have not wanted to try anything else from her because I just am not intrigued by a lot of the other color stories. And that one also is a little bit more pricey, but I'm telling you, it is so, so worth it. Lastly, I wanted to mention these Tarte Tartlet and Bloom palette and the Tarte Tartlet Toasted palette. These both have kind of got a dent put in them. I do have a couple of newer Tarte eyeshadow palettes that I am trying, but I just haven't tried enough to be like, oh my gosh, I love these. These are my go-tos, especially for travel. They are awesome, simple nude eyeshadow looks. If you're somebody that gets overwhelmed by these super big palettes, something like this is gonna be a lot better for you. You don't have as many options, which is a good thing because you don't get overwhelmed and it's a lot easier to make multiple looks with these. Next, we're gonna go ahead and get into primer and I do have two primer waters. First, I have the Smashbox Primer Water Set and Refresh Spray. If you're looking for a primer water that does not have any mist, it's going to be very refreshing and hydrating. It's not going to leave an oily film on your face. This is that girl. On the other hand, I have the Milk Makeup Grip Set and Refresh Spray and it actually does have two layers like you guys can see. There's a green layer and a blue layer, so you do have to shake it. This is going to be something that is just literally a primer mist version of the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip. It just is going to help your makeup more so with longevity and it also does feel very refreshing and cooling on the face. I'm gonna go ahead and do my more hydrating primers first and I have two that I wanna talk about. I also discovered this one earlier this year. This is the Huda Beauty Water Jelly Hydrating Primer. Out of anything I've tried drugstore and high end, it is the most lightweight hydrating primer that you're going to use. It's actually more of like an essence type of texture. I know that it is going to leave my skin feeling hydrated and supple. But again, just like the Smashbox Primer Water, it is super lightweight. And then this should be no surprise to any of you that have been here for a while. This is the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer. It just has such good longevity. Your makeup is going to grip to the face. Also very refreshing. I have my more mattifying slash pore filling primer. So I'm gonna go ahead and mention these two first because they're very similar to one another. One size Secure the Blur Makeup Magnet Primer. Many of the Rare Beauty Always an Optimist Primer. I believe that both of these are more silicone based. They feel to be more silicone based, but they are very lightweight and they almost have a silicone slash jelly texture. They are more so refreshing. They do not feel super heavy on the skin. I personally just use the more pore filling primers in my T-zone. So the hydrating primer I'll go all over the face with. Lastly, I have a mini of the Smashbox, the original Photo Finish Smooth and Blur Primer. And the reason that I'm mentioning this is because for a long time, I really did not even use this because I was like, I have other good silicone based primers. I don't feel the need to spend this much. This is the best pore filling primer that I have tried because it is silicone based, but it is the most thin, lightweight consistency. I prefer silicone based primers to fill in my pores. I feel like lotions just don't do it for me. I feel like when I get the silicone based primers, it's actually something that physically goes in and fills in my pores. I found one thing that is pretty similar to it, but just not the same, and that will also be mentioned in my drugstore version of this video. And I also like this because it's oil free. I do have one more hydrating primer. It blended in with my loose setting powder, so. I almost forgot about it. MAC Mineralized Charged Water Gel. This is actually going to be more of a lotion slash gel consistency, which is the reason I like it. I have found that I do not like lotion-based moisturizers or primers or anything. I don't necessarily think it's because I have oily skin, but I do think it has something to do with that because I just feel like the lotion clogs my pores. I so recommend if you have oily skin to use a more gel-based moisturizer, I swear to you, you will reap the benefit. You can honestly probably use this as a moisturizer on its own, but I personally have found that it does make a difference when you use a moisturizer and a moisturizing slash hydrating primer versus just a moisturizer. Next is foundation, and I only have four from the high end side of makeup that I want to talk about. For foundation, I do prefer something that is medium to full coverage. My preference and what I love the most as of right now is anywhere from natural to a more semi-matte 
soft matte type of finish. I'm gonna go from natural to a soft matte rare beauty foundation and I have the color 450N. Number one, love the packaging on this. It comes with a doe fat applicator so it is super easy to apply. When I want a true your skin but better type of foundation, this is what I use because it looks like skin but it just goes over your imperfections and just makes you look like you have a nice clean canvas. It is very lightweight, medium to full coverage. It can be built up but I usually never do build it up if I don't get that full coverage from just my foundation because I do use a powder foundation. I was really worried that this was going to not last long on the skin at all because it is a natural finish, but this does have nice longevity and the shade range on this is pretty awesome. Too Faced Born This Way Undetectable Medium to Full Coverage Foundation and this is the natural finish. I have tried the matte finish. Me three years ago never thought I would say this. I like the natural finish more better. It's easier to put cream products like cream bronzer and cream blush on top of this product than the matte version. I feel like the matte version just dries down so much to the point where it doesn't like the cream products going on top of it and it like almost separates and stuff. I'm not sure what type of finish this has because I never use it on its own. Derma Blend CC Continuous Correction Foundation and I am in the color 50 in. This is actually a little bit too light for me but I will mix this in with foundations if I feel like I want a super full coverage or if I feel like it needs to be a little bit lighter. I do need to go up to 60 in when I finish this but I'm telling you this is just like straight super concentrated liquid but it does not feel heavy on the face at all. It is the most full coverage thing that I have tried. I actually prefer this over the actual foundation that comes in a glass bottle. The shade range is not as good. Lastly, but definitely not least, our Soft Matte Complete Foundation in the color Macau Medium Deep 4. Number one, I love the fact that it comes upside down. You get all of your product. It comes with one and a half fluid ounces, which is 50% more than what you usually get in a standard foundation. So for the price, it is a very good deal. It comes in an amazing shade range. The coverage is full. The only way I can explain this to you is it looks like you literally have a filter on your skin. I have never found a foundation that can take away the color from my discoloration and texture and also smooth my texture. I usually don't get that smoothing blurring effect from my foundation until I put powder foundation on. I have four concealers that I wanna go ahead and talk about and all of them are new favorites except for for this one. Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer and this I have in the color Butterscotch. If I need something that I know is going to work, this is instantly what I grab for when I take on vacation because it never fails me. It has full coverage. You get so much product in here. It comes in an amazing shade range and the finish is more of a natural finish, which I do prefer natural finishes with concealers only because I found that they look a little bit more filtered when you set them with powder. I found with some matte concealers, they tend to look a little powdery because when you put the concealer on and it has a matte finish, it goes from liquid to powder. So then when you put more powder on top of it, it kind of gets that little powdery look. Rare Beauty Concealer, and I have this in the color 450N. Pretty much exactly the same as the foundation. It has a very nice skin-like finish. The only thing that about this is that I wish I would have gone up a color. So usually what I will do is put this on blend it out and then put something a little bit lighter on top of it, which is a technique that I've been liking to do anyways more often because I like the more brightened look and I found that when I use concealers that are too light, I almost get a like grayish type of under eye look because it's so light that it's not necessarily that it's not full coverage, but it's so light that it turns the blue veins a more grayish color. So correcting and then highlighting has been something that I've been loving to do. And the applicator on this is awesome. It's not your traditional doe fat applicator. It is more slanted. Huda Beauty Overachiever Concealer and this is in the color Peanut Butter. By no means is it not full coverage. The only thing that I don't like about it is the applicator. I have to clean it every time I use it because it has one of these metal type of applicators. But it does feel good when you're applying it because it has a metal type of cooling effect. An old favorite that I have kind of fallen back in love with recently recently versions of the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer and I have these in the color 47S and 53N Deep. I forgot how much I love these until I started using them again. A lot of people say that these are really drying and like too matte for them, but I have definitely tried concealers that are way, 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 way more drying. They don't feel super heavy underneath the eyes. They're very full coverage. The reason that I like these is because unlike other concealers that are matte, when you set them, they don't look cakey or powdery. They look so, so beautiful. I did do a comparison between the Ultra Creamy and this, 
and this actually had more coverage than the Ultra Creamy did. Now we are ready for loose powder. First things first, this should be no surprise. Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powders. I have them in every color that they come in. Translucent, I have the Translucent Honey, and I have the Translucent Medium Deep. There's two powders that I have tried that I like as much as these, and they are both high-end. I have not found anything in the drugstore that is better than these powders. The only way I can describe it is it's like a filtering effect. So I love the Translucent for all over the face and underneath the eyes. I love the Translucent Honey for underneath the eyes because it does do a little bit of brightening. And then the Translucent Medium Deep, I actually use all over my face and it adds a little bit of coverage. Haley's Beauty Retouch Perfecting Powder Loose Setting Powder. This is actually the old packaging. I'm not gonna throw this away just because they changed the packaging. They may have changed the formula, but I don't care. If you need a colorless powder, a little bit more price friendly than the Laura Mercier, this is your girl. No flashback. It is so finely milled and I love, love, love this underneath my eyes. Derma Blend Loose Setting Powders and I have them in the colors Original and Warm Saffron. So Original, I use underneath my eyes and all over my face. Warm Saffron, I love using underneath my eyes because it actually does give a little bit of extra coverage. All three of these formulas are pretty much identical. They are all very smoothing. They're all very filtering. Some of them of color are going to add a little bit of coverage. The translucent ones are flashback proof. Next, I have three press powders. I'm gonna go ahead and name them all quickly because I really like all of these for pretty much the exact same reason. First, I have the Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Complexion Powder in the color Spiced Rum. MAC Studio Fix Powder Foundation in the color NC46. Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin Blurring Powder Foundation, and I have this in the color Y505. These all help me to achieve a more medium to full coverage look. They are all very lightweight. They all have very good coverage very finely milled. As far as coverage goes, it would probably be from least coverage to most coverage, it would be the Too Faced, then the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin, than the MAC Studio Fix. I feel like the MAC Studio Fix definitely has the most coverage. It is the most heavy duty. Like if I'm going somewhere for 12 hours and I not only need my makeup to last, but look good and last, the Studio Fix and the Makeup Forever are what I'll use. This one is not as long lasting, but it does come in more colors. And I love this one too, because the Too Faced line is the only complexion line that I have found that I have liked every single thing from. Next is going to be bronzer. I don't have any powder bronzer because truly I like cream bronzer more than powder bronzer. Huda Beauty Tantor Contour Bronzer Cream, and I have the color medium, and this is what it looks like. I love the component on this, and I love the fact that these go so, so deep. This is medium, and for a lot of brands, this would be like dark deep or deep dark. Out of everything I'm going to mention, you're going to get the most bang with your buck. Please, please be light-handed because this is so, so pigmented. I found with bronzer, it is much harder to take away than it is to add. It's very creamy and it's very blendable, but it's so pigmented that sometimes when you have so much pigment, it's hard to take away from that. Patrick Ta Cream Contour and Powder Bronzer Duo, and this is in the color She's Chiseled. I love the formula of Patrick Ta's cream products. I love the fact that you get a little cover in here so the products aren't mixing. This is like the perfect neutral, nice dark chocolate espresso color that just gives the cheeks the most chiseled look. This is not going to be as pigmented as the Huda Beauty, but it's definitely very buildable and it's very easy to blend out. Lastly, this is the Fenty Beauty Match Stick and this is in the color Espresso. I love this because it's in a stick version so it's very easy to just apply it straight to your face. Now with these two products, I do not apply this straight to my face. I will go in with a brush, dip a little on the back of my hand to take away and then add. But with this, it's so creamy and blendable that it's very hard to overdo, which I think makes this very, very user friendly. And this one does have a little bit more of a soft matte finish. Next is blush. And I have four products that I wanna go ahead and talk about. So I'll do the creams first. This is actually a very, very new favorite, but I just cannot keep my hands off of it. Power 28 Beach Please Luminous Tinted Balm. And I don't know if the color is Beach Please or Power Hour. I'll put that right down here. It is the most beautiful mauve brown pinkish nudish type of color for darker skin. It is so, so creamy, blends in like a dream. It is not going to pull the foundation off from underneath, which is something that I have found more often than not with cream products. And this is something that will not do that. It does have more of a natural luminous finish. Almost can get away with using this as a bronzer and a blush because it does have those more brown warmest shades in it. Very similar to that color is the Fenty Beauty Cheeks Out Freestyle Cream Blush, and this is in the color 10 Rose Latte. This is the Fenty Beauty 
This one has almost a little bit more pink in it versus this is a little bit more corally, not even orangey, but the undertone is a little bit more corally than this one is. The Fenty Beauty is not as luminous as the Tower 28, but they, I mean, they're very similar in color. Patrick Ta Double Take Cream and Powder Blush Duo, and this is in the color Oh She's Different. I really usually do not love pink blush, but this is like the most beautiful rosy pink the powder is. And then again, with the cream blush, it is it does pull a little bit more of a brownie nude than the powder does, but the formula is just exactly like the bronzer. The powder does not have shimmer in it whatsoever. It gives a very nice flush to the cheeks. Pure, and this is the matte blush. And I don't know if the color is very beautiful or blushing act, but this is what it looks like. It's pressed very, very uniquely. It has more of like a marbled print to it. And the component is so, so nice. Very nice dark pink that when you swirl the two colors together, it looks awesome on the skin. This also does not have any shimmer in it. I have two highlighters that I just could not keep my hands off this year. And I'm gonna go ahead and mention this because it may be close to being discontinued, but you still may be able to get your hands on it. Cause I know that next year, I probably will not be able to recommend this to you guys. Becca highlighter specifically in the color Chocolate Geode. And this is what it looks like. It's a little smashed, but I found this at TJ Maxx not too long ago. You're somebody that is darker this is the most beautiful highlight. Luckily, if you guys did not know, Smashbox did buy a couple of the shades of highlighters to continue on for Becca, but other than that, I think that they're discontinued. I used to love Topaz. Topaz is a little bit more of a yellowy gold, like what I have on my eyelids, versus this is going to be more of a true brown gold. Jaclyn Cosmetics Loose Highlighter, and this is in the color Megawatt. This is a loose highlighter, which I usually do not like. What I like about this is it's not glitter heavy, but it is a beautiful, beautiful sheen. I hate, hate, hate highlighters that are super glitter heavy and they just look like you have chunks of glitter on your face, but this is so finely milled that when it hits the light, it's so natural looking, but also very glam. Next is lip products, and I only have one lip balm that I wanna talk about. This is the GlossierMintBalm.com. This is in the scent Mint. I do have a dupe for this, but the dupe is a little bit thicker in consistency. This is the most long lasting thing I have ever tried as far as lip balm goes. I wanna go ahead and talk about lip liners, and I will swatch all of these for you guys, that way you can see. For lip liner, I do prefer something that is a little bit more brown. I either do all brown or like a pinky brown. Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk 3 Intense Lip Cheat Lip Pencil. Very, very deep espresso brown. For more of a true brown color, I like the Jaclyn Cosmetics Lip Liner in the color Toasty. Sephora Rouge Gel Lip Liner in the color 32 Hot Sauce. Sephora Rouge Gel Lip Liner in the color 15 Rosewood. I usually prefer roll-ups because I found that roll-ups have a little bit more of a creamy consistency and I love something that is creamy. I don't like anything that is going to drag on the lips. All of these are pencils though, and they are all very, very creamy. This right here is Rosewood. This right here is Hot Sauce from the Sephora line. This is Toasty from Jaclyn Cosmetics, and this is the Deep Intense 3 from Charlotte Tilbury. I have one brand of liquid lipsticks and then one actual lipstick, so I'll just mention this to you guys first. Sephora Hashtag Lip Stories Lipstick, and this is in the color Yum Yum. Guys, this is only $9. It is so, so creamy. It has more of a natural finish to it, but it is so pigmented and it is very comfortable on the lips. Lipstick, I really will not pay a whole bunch of money for because I feel like the drugstore does a very good job with lipsticks. Next, I want to go ahead and shout out the Ofra Cosmetics liquid lipsticks in general. This up here is Barack, and then in the middle is Las Olas, which is my favorite, and then this down here is Mocha. They have more of like a soft matte type of finish to them, but they're very comfortable on the lips. I went ahead and swatched them in the order that I named them to you guys. These are my favorite liquid lipsticks because I found with a lot of liquid lipsticks that they can be very, very drying, and these are not whatsoever. They don't crackle on the lips, and they are very long lasting. You can eat and drink with these and you will still have them on your lips. Next would be eyes, but I do not have a, I have mascaras and eyeliners and eye pencils that I like from a high-end side of makeup, but I feel like the ones from my drugstore options, I like more than the high-end. So I'm not going to mention them because the drugstore wants to take the cake. So if you guys wanna see what eye products I like to use, then make sure to watch the next video. I do have two setting sprays that I wanna go ahead and talk to you guys about. This should be no surprise to you old timers. This is the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. This is going to do a great job at mattifying and making sure your makeup is long wearing. It's going to lock everything into place. The only thing is this does have a little bit of an alcohol scent to it. It does not bother me, but I know it does bother some people. But if the alcohol scent does bother you, I do have an option for you. Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. It's literally the exact same as the Urban Decay, but it just does not have that strong 
alcohol smell to it. All right, guys, that is my best of beauty for 2021 for my high-end makeup. If you guys like any of these products as much as I do, please let me know down in the comments what products we share. If you have some other high-end products that you like, please make sure to leave them down in the comments. That way I can check them out. But yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.